You're here a little early today. Um, I'm sorry, do I know you? Actually, I know one of your patients. I was hoping we could chat for a bit. Yeah, well, now's not a good time. So if you come to the office, try to schedule something for next week, I'm sure we can... I insist. What is this about? Like I said, I think we should talk. Mind if I have a seat? Why are you here, Detective? Renault. Well, you can call me Chance. And as far as your question goes, I like nature stuff. It helps me clear my head. Sounds like you really do need therapy. Yes and no. I probably could use a session or two, but unfortunately I have a job to do at the moment. So is this other patient a cop? Actually, he is. But from what I understand, he told you that he works in construction. Actually, it's funny, though, because when I was little... Can we move this along? Because I have some place I need to go, and I'd rather not be late. Sure thing. By now, I'm sure you're aware of your former patient, Thomas Crane. Yeah, drug overdose. Pretty open and shut case. The police already questioned me at length about it. So why are you here, Detective? Well, see, that's just it. We ran a test on Mr. Crane, and it showed different drugs in his system that didn't match with the bottles that were at his residence. Okay, and what does it have to do with me? Well, we know from your statement that you filled out at least two separate prescriptions for Mr. Crane prior to his death, neither of which was found in his system nor at his residence. But aside from that, we spoke with a few of your patients. You had no right. Actually, we did. See, there's nothing wrong with a patient disclosing their own information with law enforcement. Okay, did they even know why they were being questioned? Believe it or not, we do possess a bit of tact when it comes to these types of situations. And considering how highly regarded you are by these individuals, we didn't see a need to drag your name through the mud. How thoughtful of you. Can I go now? Not just yet. First, let me ask you something. Why is it that we found several drugs in Mr. Crane's system that didn't match with the prescriptions that you wrote for him? I have no idea. Okay, so are you saying that you didn't notice any bottles missing from your office prior to his demise? Of course not. Fair enough. You look, if there's nothing else, then I really have there to go. There is, but I promise this will be it. So there was a series of burglaries not too long ago that offered trace amounts of DNA at the crime scenes. Okay, what does that have to do with me? Mrs. Johnson, please. I'm almost done. As it turns out, several of the items missing were found at Mr. Crane's residence, which prompted his DNA to be collected by law enforcement. Afterwards, it turns out that it wasn't matched to the crime scenes. I'm sorry, I have to go. There was also another match to a rape kit provided by a high school student about 10 years ago. One, Michaela Johnson. Last question. Why would the DNA of one of your patients come back as a match for something like this? You know what? Never mind. Don't answer that. You know what I think? I think that this man came into your office one day with a serious problem and was hoping for a real second chance. He didn't know who you were at first, but maybe you recognized him right away. Maybe it took a few sessions, but at some point, you made the connection. We know from your statement in high school that the perpetrator had a distinct scar on his neck. We also know that Mr. Crane had a similar mark of his own, which leads me to believe that somewhere deep down, you knew who you were dealing with before his demise. Even if I did, those therapy sessions were working for Mr. Crane until the very end. He was getting better and better with each passing week. And I already know what you're thinking, that the statute of limitations for my case had already passed. But you're forgetting something. This man did kill himself. Trust me, I haven't forgotten. So how about this? 
I think you got Mr. Crane hooked on prescription medication. I think you had him so strung out that he began to rob people just to get his fix. Then, when you decided it was time, you let him put the final nails in his own coffin. I bet you left your office a few times on a phone call with a bottle of pills in plain sight. And of course, they belong to a number of different patients, so to the untrained eye, they all look the same. After that, all you had to do was sit back and wait for the police to come deliver the news. This would be a good time to get a lawyer.